The last few seasons for Schalke have not been particularly good. Now we are at the start of the 23-24 season, so whatever happened in real life has not happened in this game. We are going to be doing a five-season challenge to basically rebuild Schalke and get them to win the Bundesliga. I know it's 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 not really something that's happened for quite a while. Uh, last time was 1958. I believe in myself. Obviously, there is a very big hurdle in the way. And that hurdle is we are not even in the Bundesliga. I mean, technically, we're in the Bundesliga 2, but we are not in the league that we want to be in if we are going to try and win it. Another big problem, we are £100 million in debt. Now, the game is probably just going to get a massive loan out to pay off most of, if not all of that debt, but I would still like to try and trim down our expenses to make sure that, realistically, we are not just making that debt worse, which means, yes, we are under our wage budget. However, I want to be massively under our wage budget, which means if we take a look at our squad and sort by wages, some of these players might end up having to leave because they're on quite a lot of money. And some of them, for example, this man, he's 35 and he's on £15,000 a week. We are going to do a big trim down in the summer to make sure that we can sort out a lot of the wages. I want, I think to get under £100,000 under our budget. So we want to be spending £300,000 a week, not £400,000 a week. Let's see what we're going to do. Right then on the 2nd of September, we have done a bit of transfer business. We brought in two new players and sold, I believe, six players. Mikhail Michael, I'm not sure why I said Mikhail, Michael Langar has left the club signing for Hammerby. He's gone for £2.5,000. Moving up in terms of value is Danny Latzer, the German central midfielder who is 33 years of age. He has moved over to Montpellier and he's gone for £76,000. For £135,000, Simon Tarod has not moved up a league at signing up for Bochum. And I think this might not have been the best idea because I think on paper he's one of our better players, but he is 35 and he was earning a lot of money. For £190,000 at Blendy, Idrisi could be his name. He has moved over to Kiel on a permanent deal. 190k is actually not bad money for a player who was literally on loan last season and I don't think he's good enough for us. For £350,000, we're moving into the big money now. Ralph Farham hasn't moved over to Vancouver. He's moved over to Canada to play in the MLS. It's a decent chunk of money for a 34-year-old goalkeeper, but we did need to get a backup, which we have done, which we'll come to in just a minute. But the biggest sale is Thomas Uijan, which is probably not his name. He has signed for VFB Stuttgart, the 26-year-old Dutch left-back wing-back, maybe defence midfielder. He's moved for £1.1 million, potentially going up to one4 now, we did technically buy him last season for 1.7, but since then we have been relegated. This one, I was kind of on the fence about doing, and I thought, realistically, the money that that is going to bring back into the club, also getting rid of his wages, we'd probably want to do that, because it's kind of, we've just nullified everything, and we've got a reasonable squad anyway. We have brought in two players, one of them on a permanent deal, and that is Jakob Busk, a 29-year-old Danish goalkeeper, formerly of Union Berlin. He has come in for £85,000. Yeah, we spent a bit of money. Um, he's come in literally as a backup. I'm not expecting this man to ever kick a football for us, but he is here at the club. And the other player to join is Ernest Poku, on loan from AZ Alkmaar over in the Eredivisie. He's not joined on loan until the end of the season. I don't know whether we're paying much, if anything, of his wages. He's, we're paying him £1,600 a week. It's not a lot of money at all, and I think he's going to be starting. He's going to be our starting striker. There were some other business going on as well. Obviously, this is the start of a save, so a lot of these transfers we did not do. There's a 4.3 million there for Zalazar, Butler going for 2.6, and Peringer going for 1.5. Obviously, joining the club as well, a few players as well. So there's been a lot of business going on. So the finances have kind of fixed themselves, like I thought they would do, but also... Wage budget wise, we are almost at that 300,000. We are on 308,758 pounds per week, which I think I've done pretty good there. I think I've done a pretty good job. I think I've removed maybe about 30,000 off the wage budget, which is pretty good. I want to stay 100,000 pounds under our wage budget, at least whilst we are in Bundesliga 2. When we get promoted, notice I say when, not if, we are going to kind of start to try and expand what we spend on our wages. But I'm not going to go stupid. I think what I'm going to try and do is do maybe one or two big name players. I was going to say Galacticos, but they're not going to be on like 100 and 200,000 pounds a week. We might have somebody on 30 grand a week. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So obviously, being in the Bundesliga 2 and not being in any form of other competition, we've literally got the league 
and the DFB Pokal to worry about. So in the DFB Pokal, we've got Bochum in the second round. I don't know where we're going to kind of expect him to finish. I imagine we might do all right, but I don't think we're going to get anywhere near the final. Maybe like quarter final, something like that, which is fine. In the Bundesliga 2, things have not started off particularly well. Two wins, one draw and one defeat leaves us in seventh place. But if we take a look, two teams get automatically promoted. One goes into a playoff. And if we do the season preview, that's it. They're expecting us to win the league. So I, I'm kind of okay with that. I feel like we've got plenty of time to turn things around and I'm happy with that. Let's just make sure we actually do get promoted. Finishing first and second is kind of the goal here. From a formation perspective, we are doing the 4-2-3-1 Black Panther formation, which if you're new here, it's the formation I've used for pretty much every save because it's good. It just seems to do the job and we are locking in Poku as our lead striker and that is it. I'm only locking in Poku because he's really fast and if I don't put him there, they actually play Caraman who I think actually Caraman is better on the wings. So we're going to stick with Poku up front. Caraman's going to probably end up on the right wing or the left wing. I think it might be the left wing. No, the right wing because Cherlinov, he's a very good player on loan from Burnley. He's currently out injured for four to seven weeks, but when he comes back, he's going to be very useful for us. We also have as well, it is Gramiel. It's probably not how his name is said. He's out for seven to eight months with damaged cruciate ligaments. Now, he was a player that I would have loved to manage to build my defence around. Because he's only 22, still a child, but obviously missing basically an entire season's worth of football. Probably not going to be good for him. Just click in the best 11 option. This is what they reckon our best 11 is. And arguably, I'm okay with this. So we've got Soppy as our right back, which is a concern because he's obviously on loan from Atalanta. So maybe we need to look at bringing in a right back, possibly in the summer. I say possibly in the summer next season. We've got uh, Matriassini, might be his name, 23-year-old central defender. He looks quite good, doesn't he? He's wanted. I'm hoping he's not going to go anywhere. Darmstadt and Heidenheim want him. We've got Kaminsky as well. So we've got a decent older centre-back and a decent young centre-back. We've got Derry John Merkin, who is an Englishman who I've never heard of, and he's very good. I do like the look of Derry John, which is good. Schellenberg and Seguin in the centre of midfield. Karaman, Drexler and Chelinov as the attacking midfielders and Poku leading the lines. Obviously, this isn't what he's going to play, but this is technically our best starting eleven. So one thing with German football is they have a winter break. We are not going to be doing the January transfer window, but we will come back at the end of the first part of the season, which I believe is just before Christmas to see how well things have gone on. I'm hoping we're in the top three of the Bundesliga. I'm hoping we're still in the DFB Pokal, but I honestly don't really care for it. Right, it's the 17th of December and we're looking at the DFB Pokal and we are currently in the quarterfinals. And we are one of three, just three, Bundesliga 2 sides left in the competition. You've got Schalke, you've got St. Pauli, and you've got Kaiserslautern. I believe that's the three, if I'm not mistaken. It is, yeah. So, I think we can beat Darmstadt. I think that's a possible victory. If we get lucky and then maybe draw Union Berlin in the next round, or even a Kaiserslautern or a St. Pauli, we could get in the final of this. This is a possibility we could get in the final of the DFB Pokal. Obviously... I'm not too fussed if we don't, but if we can get there, that will be pretty ridiculous because that means we might be somehow in Europe next season, even if we don't get promoted. The thing is, we should get promoted because after 17 games, we have won 13, drawn one and lost three. Top of the table by nine whole points. Hertha in second, Hanover in third. Bundesliga 2 is a very stacked league. There are some big teams in here. I don't know how big they are in terms of quality, but Schalke, Hertha, Hanover, HSV, St. Pauli, and Nuremberg, maybe not Nuremberg, Kaiserslautern as well. These are all very good sides. Firth as well, another very good team. Bundesliga 2 is good. Like, the German, like, second division is arguably better than the championship, and the championship's a very good league. Also, in case you're wondering, we are still obviously in debt. We're now £12 million, pounds, or nearly £12 million pounds in debt, because basically... Our expenses are way more than our income, but that's fine. Once we get promoted, we will kind of, that should sort itself out completely. So I'm not too concerned at the moment about the finances. We are spending about £10,000 a week more now on our wages because we've offered some new contracts. There's been some kind of incremental increases and things like that, which kind of sort of out of my control, but not really. But it's, it's fine. Let's not worry too much about it. Right then, next up, I guess what we need to do is jump to the end of the season just to see how well things have finished. I'm thinking we are promoted, okay? I'm thinking we're promoted, and obviously we do have the DFB Pokal to worry about as well, which, sure, let's let's try and go to the final. That'll be nice. So the first step of our journey is complete. We are back in Bundesliga. Is it the Bundesliga or Bundesliga? I'm going to call it the Bundesliga. We have won 
Bundesliga 2, we have been promoted. We have won it by a fair distance as well. 29 wins in total. Just two draws of nil-nils, both of them, and three defeats, which is obviously very, very good. But how do we do in the DFB Pokal? So in the quarterfinal, we managed to get past Darmstadt 2-0. VfB Stuttgart at Bayer and RB Leipzig also making it through to the semi-final. And in the semi-final, we knock out RB Leipzig on penalties. A 3-3 draw and then going through on penalties to the final against Bayer where we win that one in extra time. Somehow, we've won the DFB Pokal and the Bundesliga 2. And I don't know how we've done this. It was an extra time as well. It was a 112th minute penalty from Drexler. So Dominic Drexler is the man who won, wins us the DFB Pokal. But also, in the 87th minute, Brian Lasmi, I believe, comes off the bench to score the equalising goal for us to give us the trophy. I'm assuming we've won this before. I imagine we've won this many times before. But the fact that we've managed to do this from the second division of Germany... Beating a decent side as well. Beating Bayer, who finished third in the Bundesliga. What has happened? So we've weirdly won the double. We've won literally everything we could possibly win this season. And because of that, financially, we are now in the black. We have got £3.658 million in the bank. We've got a slightly bigger wage budget than we did have last season. Obviously, things have kind of increased because of uh, wage rises due to sort of promotions and bonuses and all sorts of stuff like that. But that is fine. We are in to the Bundesliga, back where we belong with Schalke. So let's just double check and confirm then when it comes to the trophies. We have won the Bundesliga two or four times. Last time was in 2022 and now obviously 2024. The DFB Pokal, we've won it again for the sixth time. Next up on our list then is the Bundesliga. We have not won it since 1958, which is what, 70 years ago maybe-ish, roughly. Can we do that in the next four seasons? It is going to be a hell of a rise if we're going to do it, but we are certainly in a decent position to do so. We're going to try and stick with my kind of unofficial rules of not going mad when it comes to wages. And we're going to build, hopefully in Season 2, a squad good enough to stay up. That needs to be Objective 1. We need to stay up in the Bundesliga. And then Season 3, we need to start pushing for Europe.